Good evening, everyone. Today is Thursday, September the 12th, and you are listening to the Digipire Podcast, episode 22, Making Money with Viral Sites. And I'll explain what exactly that entails in just a few moments. But on Digipire, on Digipire.com, we discuss everything related to the digital economy that we are all living in, whether it's making the money online, whether it's making the money on any of the gig sites such as Fiverr.com or Freelancer.com, or it's on any on the rideshare apps like uh cannot articulate what i'm trying to say today like uber or lyft or any of the other ones or any any of the the abundant ways you can make money online whether you're selling digital products on etsy ebay or crafts or just whatever it may be we discuss it all we discuss how to do it we talk about other people that are doing it we i discuss some research that things that i have found news that as it relates to living life in the digital economy, people that influence the digital economy, and just everything that you can possibly think of. First, I'm going to go over the news that affects us that are living in this digital economy and profiting from it or making our living in it, and those that would like to. I'm going to go over the news that affects that. Then I'm going to answer some questions from episode 18. Actually, from episode 19, some questions that I had about publishing on Amazon. I want to answer some questions about that. And at the end, if I have enough time, I'm going to answer questions about episode 20 so I can catch up. And I'm going to do that at the end. And that episode was episode 20, Tips and Resources to Secure Funding for Your Online Business or Venture. You can find all of the episodes that are online at digipire.com slash podcast. You can find the individual episode pages at, like, for example, this one at digipire.com slash episode 22, digipire.com slash episode 21, and so on and so forth. And you can ask any question of me at digipire.com slash ask. I try to at least acknowledge everyone that I receive and answer them as it relates to the website. It must be about the digital economy or making money in the digital economy or anything about the digital economy. I don't typically answer personal questions. I've had some people ask me some personal questions that I'm not going to share with people I don't know. I don't want people that... I don't share with people that know me, let alone people that I don't really know. So I won't answer those. I probably won't even acknowledge them. So please don't do that. You've got to get to know someone first before you start diving into that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Anyway, if you give me just a few brief moments so I can go over my notes, I will be with you momentarily. Be right back. I wanted to share something with you guys very briefly. I watch a lot of documentaries, especially about successful business people and, you know, people that that have had success in business and even the ones that have not actually that have had success and then lost it all and started over, just all that kind of stuff. And so I watched one the other day, a few days ago, about Chuck Feeney, and he really, really 
it really, it, I'm not sure what's the word I'm looking for. It really touched me, maybe. He's a, he's a, real, he's a really interesting guy. He made his money in, in the, hold on just a second, just a second. Sorry about that. He made his money in duty-free stores and airports, and he started out when commercial aviation was, you know, was pretty much in its infancy. When people were not, when every, when the everyday person was not flying, it was pretty much geared towards the wealthy. Only the wealthy were flying at that point. And so he made his his money in. And um, duty free shops, and became you know a billionaire. And he has a, a a real altruistic side. And what got me was that he pretty much gave all of his money away, minus a couple of million, I guess, to, to, for himself. He made sure his family was taken care of, provided for, and he lives and he rents his apartment in San Francisco. <clears throat> Just as a reminder that, you know, money is not the end all. Money and for me anyway, money and wealth and and fabulousness and private jets and, and stomping on people to try to get ahead and, and just being a jerk or an a hole so you can have as much money as humanly possible. And he really appealed to me because he didn't he didn't he he doesn't seem to be that way. He seems to be a genuinely altruistic person and you know fame money and fortune is is not his end goal and that's kind of a, a narcissistic way to be when, when you think about it i mean money is only a tool and if you can use the tool to to, to be a better person or help the world or or help other people i think that is a much better <clears throat> a, much, a much better way to be and I think that we all should, or me, I can't speak for everyone, but, I th you know, I think the aim is to, to use money as a tool to, to help the world and not just help yourself. For me, and I think for a lot of people out there in the cyberland, I think a lot of it boils down to freedom. You want the freedom to be able to to, to choose, and I think that is important. When you have money coming in from from everywhere, from you know, when you deal in the digital economy or you deal online, you can have that, and you don't have all your eggs in the same basket as you would typically in a job. You have more freedom, and that's just the way it is. And you get that freedom by by slowly, you know, investing or building building a, something outside of, of your career or whatever, a side hustle is what a lot of people call it. But anyway, I think he's an interesting guy. I have a lot of, I have like a, a list of, uh, on, on YouTube, a, a, a playlist of all the people that, that I've been intrigued by and that, that kind of go along with the, with the way I think or the way I, I feel about business and about life in general. And I'm going to post that one day. I think I actually do have it posted on my personal website, johnhickenbotham.com, which reminds me I did not introduce myself once again. And I've been told that that's what I should, I should be doing, that, and I agree. So my name is John Higginbotham. <clears throat> I am your host for this series of podcasts. I've been in Internet marketing for a long time. I've had several businesses that... I started and, and stopped or, or whatever. I've had a thrift shop. I've had a cleaning business. And those were, I had a real estate business. Actually, I still am, do, do metal in real estate. So those are my, my brick and mortar businesses. My, just a second. Sorry about that. Everybody seems to want to contact me when I'm trying to do a show. So anyway, a lot of these people that, that you hear, that you see the documentaries on, that I see the documentaries on, came of age or started their businesses, and, you know, and relatively long time ago, and basically in the analog world, so they have, they've had, they have, and had, or have, or had, analog businesses. 
And so now I always think about if you can fast forward, you know, 30, 50, 60, however many years, you'll, you'll see a lot of documentaries about people that have made fortunes or small fortunes or made a living. You don't have to even make a fortune. You can just make a living, make a, a way to support yourself. In the digital world, by working from home, I mean, you, you basically can never leave at your house if you don't want to. Sometimes appeals to me. I like to run around, and I like to like to stay gone. But I like the I like the idea of not having to leave wherever you are at the time if you don't want to. And you can do that these days. You can build a business. You can build a career. You can do everything in the digital world, much like the people of the past did in its analog at counterpart. So, like I said, I've had businesses. I've had I've had analog businesses. I still have a Real, I still have real estate interests, but I have divested myself of everything else because I do not want to be tied down to anything. And you you do that when you have a brick and mortar business. You you tie yourself down. It's much much more difficult. I've done it, and I don't like it. I won't do it again. So anyway. I'm going to go over all news that is news that affects us in the digital economy. Then I'm going to go over questions that you guys have asked me. And if you have any questions of me, you can always do so at digipire.com slash ask. If you want to see the show notes and the resources that I mentioned on this podcast, you can do that at digipire.com slash ask episode 22 and we're going to be talking about making money with viral sites and by the way it does not mean you have to have a viral hit or a viral website you know it doesn't mean it has to go crazy popular or anything like that it just means that you have to drive traffic to it you're basically doing traffic arbitrage is really what you're doing but anyway we're going to discuss that after I talk about the news and answer your questions. So just give me a few more moments and I'll be right with you. As a reminder, you can visit us online at digipire.com slash podcast and you can also view our feed on facebook there under feed it's in the menu section you also can go to digipire.com slash feed for an update on everything that we post regarding living in the digital economy making money and a lot of the things that i don't have time to discuss here on the podcast you can also view upcoming shows and ask me questions on on there, on Facebook, on social media. So, now I'm going to go in to all news that is news in e-commerce, the digital economy, and all of that. So the first thing I want to talk about is, I just got a notification actually this morning that Spreaker now allows you to to run your podcast from your Chromebook, which is very, very, very nice, because I, I believe they're the, well, according to them, and I think they're correct, that they're the only one, and I've tried a lot of them, the only podcast service that does that. Oh, gosh. Hold on just a second. Okay, sorry about that. Um, but they now allow you to record from your Chromebook, which is nice because it just gives you another way to to con or to communicate with the masses. You can do it from your mobile phone. You can do it from your Chromebook. You can do it from your Windows machine. So it just gives you a lot of different options, and so. Yeah, that's the the first thing I want to talk about. That makes it very nice. If you're thinking about doing a podcast, then I would highly recommend uh, Spreaker.com. And no, I don't get paid for saying that. I don't have enough people paying attention to me right now to warrant that. But yeah, it's pretty neat. So just give me a few seconds. I'll be right with you. (laughs) 
Okay, so this comes from CNBC.com and it's FedEx UPS Jockey with Amazon as tech giant expands into shipping. And I'm just going to throw out some key points as they have it listed here on their website. FedEx is expanding delivery service to seven days a week, seven days per week all year, but it ended its ground delivery contract with Amazon. UPS is exploring using drones and self-driving trucks. Amazon has built up its own transportation network, including a fleet of cargo planes. So now Amazon has gone from a customer to being a direct competitor with FedEx. Speaking of which, they Amazon. This is this is they started offering their employees or started offering incentives for people to start their own delivery service like in the city and they claim that if you had a fleet of vehicles you can lease their vehicles with the it's, it's basically a partner program where you can lease their vehicles with the Amazon logos on it and you can earn as much as three hundred thousand dollars in annual profit with a fleet that they claim so just another way that Amazon is kind of entrepreneur, entrepreneurial friendly or friendly to entrepreneurs or, or, or kind of, kind of, um, what's what I'm looking for? Kind of, uh, what's what I'm looking for? They <sighs> cannot think today. They harbor, harbor, that's not what I'm looking for. They kind of have a, an atmosphere of entrepreneurship. I mean, because I worked at Amazon for a short while and I worked at UPS, of course, right after school, and did that right after school. And so I got a got an idea of what how their culture was, and it was very entrepreneurial minded. I mean, I think I mentioned it before in the podcast that UPS. There's a lot of people that worked at UPS that had side hustles, that had side businesses, and worked part time at UPS. Even some of the managers had one. The my manager at the time, and this has been a long, long time ago had a, he sold motor, motorcycles, he had like a high-end motorcycle shop. It wasn't Harley Davidson, it was something else, but I can't remember, but he had a high-end motorcycle shop, and they, and another one of the managers had, like, he sold eyeglasses, had an eyeglass shop, and sold eyeglasses and contacts, and my, somewhere, somewhere in West Virginia, I'm not sure exactly where. But, and Amazon, of course, had, they fought, fostered, maybe that's what I'm looking for, fostered. They fostered an entrepreneurial mindset. And so, of course, Amazon at the time, when I first started, they had Amazon auctions, which I sold on eBay heavily at the time. And I dabbled in in Amazon auctions, but then it slowly evolved into what it is now. They did away with the auctions, and now it's just a storefront. And, of course, I have, I sell stuff on Amazon on there, too. Would I pursue the something that the, the, the open up a delivery driver business via Amazon? Absolutely not. That goes into the into something into the physical realm. Into hold on a second. That I want to stay away from. That would require a lot more hands on. I think, and I mean, it might be something that you might want to look into. You can do a Google search. It's actually on TechCrunch.com. You can do a search for Amazon offers employees 10K and three months paid to start their own delivery business. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they've opened it up to everyone else or if it's just a an Amazon employee thing. Like I said, I'm not personally interested in anything like that, but it might be something that you may be interested in. So according to according to TechCrunch, I think like 200 small businesses have hired like thousands of local drivers, and it's just like a real big thing. So depending on the city you're in and the, the competition and all that kind of thing, it might be something that you could look into. So you can do a Google search for that. But back to FedEx and Amazon. Okay, Just as some retail companies are uneasy about working with Amazon, which can be both a partner and a competitor, transportation companies are facing a similar dilemma. And with their customers facing off against Amazon and other industries, shipping companies may need to take sides. Dan Newham, co-founder and principal of Digital Services and Solutions 
provider Aviono said that by ditching Amazon, FedEx may make itself more attractive to Amazon's competitors in the retail space. He compared it to reports that Walmart is pressuring some of its partners to use Microsoft's Azure for cloud computing instead of Amazon instead of Amazon Web Services, <laughs> which is very, I find that very interesting. It's kind of ironic, isn't it? Walmart said there are a small number of cases involving our most sensitive sales data that we prefer not to sit on a competitor's platform, but its vendors can choose the cloud service they prefer. Prefer, you know that that just I just find that highly interesting. So I'm not going to ramble on about that. That's something that you can look up. Uh, I'm not sure what 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 you what position UPS is taking. I think we are a ways off from having self-driving cars and moving people, uh, moving packages, let alone people. I think we're a long ways off from that. I think the technology is just going to be a while before. That's my prediction. It's going to be a ways out before that's a reality. It's just not there yet. I mean, this is not. Um, so, yeah, that's Amazon and FedEx. You can do a Google search if you want to find out more about that. If you're interested in opening up your own delivery service, UPS had like a had the, that's another thing. UPS, you could open up your own UPS store, which there's been a couple of them like that I've seen close. I'm not sure what the what what how they perform, but uh, UPS even you could even up, open up a UPS store, and I think FedEx you could. I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm not going to go on about that. I'm not going to ramble about it. You can do a Google search for that. And that's it. I'm going to continue on with the news. Just give me a few short seconds. Thank you. I'll be right with you. Okay, this next piece comes from practicalecommerce.com. And I will try to link in the show notes the links to these art- these news articles. You can do that. You can find it at digitpire.com slash episode 22. And it is titled, Re- Recommerce Surges as Retailers' Brands Get in the Game. And recommerce is basically thrift, thrift, thrift shopping, selling used clothes, selling used clothing. And re-commerce, resell commerce is the. This is coming directly from their website. Re-commerce or resell commerce is a process of selling used products or excess inventory to companies or consumers, both millennials, birth years, early 1980s to late 90s, and Generation Z, late 90s to roughly 2012, are embracing the concept of purchasing second-hand goods. They are more than two times likely to engage with re-commerce than older consumers according to Global Data, an independent retail analytics firm that performed research for the 2019 Annual Resale Report for Recommerce Apparel Merchant ThreadUp. And ThreadUp is a big player in the industry. While consumers have been buying used books, CDs, and DVDs for years, people under 40 are enthusiastically scooping up clothing, jewelry, shoes, and handbags. Generation Z is showing the highest growth rate for thrifting. And this is this really intrigues me because I had a, a, a thrift store, a thrift store, and I'm not shy about saying that it failed miserably. I was in the hole, lots and lots of money every month for approximately two years trying to make it work, and I've learned a lot from it. But this was this was this has been several years ago, but this has started back then, and I thought about doing it online, like having having the the shop, which I actually end up closing the shop and doing everything strictly online. Then I had, then I moved it. Then I found warehouse space in Columbus that I could get much cheaper, and I was move, planning on moving there anyway. So anyway, you can definitely make this work. I mean, it's definitely you can you can zero in and focus on on this whole idea of e-commerce, and that could be your little niche. And I can tell you that the, the, the margins can be pretty high. I mean, I did I did really well, and I still have a few things up actually that you can sell on a lot of these thrift store this thrift type websites it's not ebay is not the only player anymore um you can sell a mercari you can there's all kinds of places that you can sell and i might actually do a podcast on this or like a special report or a a a a blog post about this whole this whole vertical because 
it it can be it can be very lucrative. And there's something there's something always something I like about uh, about selling like theft type stuff. I'm not sure why. I just like the the whole process, finding it and and reusing it, and I just like the I just like the whole idea of it. And so yeah, so I'm I can share I'm going to share my knowledge with you and and give you some resources that you can use maybe. And so continue on. E-commerce merchants are growing 20 times faster than the broader retail market and five times faster than off-price retailers, according to CoreSight Research. The company forecasts that the total U.S. apparel resale market will grow at a compound annual rate of 13%, reaching $33 billion in 2021. I mean, I, I do a lot of research. I'm always researching, and I, I, I advise you to do the same because that's how you learn. And there's just a lot of sellers on these platforms that I just mentioned, like Mercari, that they're selling used clothing. And even on Facebook Marketplace to a certain extent, but they're they're very strict on what they list. I mean, I'm sure if you can list clothing on on Facebook Marketplace, like used clothing. I, I tried to do it a couple of times just to see, just to experiment, and I had issues with it. But yeah, you can you can you can carve your little niche and be a nice little side hustle that you can do and you can turn it into like a bona fide website if you if you want to there's just so many directions that you can take so they they mentioned thread up that says that leading e-commerce companies include thread up the real real and poshmark and I, I believe i might be wrong and i shouldn't say something that i think might be wrong no i'm not going to say it but a couple a couple of those i think that you actually send the product to them and they take care of everything, and they send you a cut if it sells, kind of like the traditional brick-and-mortar thrift shop would do. You take it to a thrift shop, and they, the owner decides whether they, they want to accept it or not, and they split, the, they split the revenue with you. The other ones, I know Poshmark. That's kind of how I built a brand on Poshmark. They, you, you actually do everything yourself, and you can sell new clothing, old clothing, you know, whatever, vintage or just whatever, and yeah, so that's something you might want to look into if you are looking for a side hustle. And I, like I said, me personally, I like the whole idea of vintage clothing and and resell and selling it and process. This is the whole market cycle, the whole thing. I just I really, really like. The only thing I don't like to to wear that would be huge is shoes. I don't like sh- I like new shoes, and I like so that'd be the only thing that 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 I would have a problem with myself. But anyway, that is that. I'm going to continue on. Actually, let me see how much time I have left here. So I'm always, I always have a, I always run out of time. I have 45 minutes. And yeah, this is going on almost six minutes. This little, this little spiel here. So I'm going to wrap that up with the news, all news that is news and e-commerce and technology. Once again, if you have any questions for me, I'm going to go over the I'm going to start the question and answer segment here in just a second. You can do so at digipire.com slash ask. And if you want to see the show notes for this episode, you can go to digipire.com slash episode 22. And if you want to listen to the live podcast, you can listen or links to the platforms that you can download it from, you can do that at digipire.com slash podcast. I will be right with you. Don't go anywhere. Don't touch that dial. Some of you might not even know what that means. I'll be right back. Okay, now for our feature presentation, episode 22, Making Money with Viral Sites. So you may be asking, what is a viral site? I'll tell you what it is not necessarily. It's not a website that or a, or a post or a blog that goes viral that a bunch of uh, people are are looking at it and sharing it and all that kind of thing. It is that is a viral site, but you cannot do that in mass. You cannot do that in bulk. It would be very very difficult to do that organically, meaning naturally without you having to pay for it. So a way to to make a site go viral or to get a lot of traffic to it is by paying for the traffic. And I'm going to give you an example since I can't do it over, over since I'm not, I can't share my screen with you. I'm going to tell you a couple of examples of what I mean. And actually, a lot, a lot of the 
the big heavy hitter, the big popular websites, like for example, my uh, the the TV station in Columbus, Ohio. What's the name of it? I can't think of all the, the actual website address. Just a second. 10 TV and that's a that's a TV station in Columbus, Ohio and they do this. They have in addition to all of their other content, they promote other people's content that is on a network. So for example, you load up your your a post or an article on your blog and it gets what's the word I'm looking for? It gets fed or syndicated to a lot of other sites that have this little widget and on their on their page or their blog that will show up a bunch of different people's different content. And a lot of the a lot of newspapers do it. If you go to your local newspaper or your local TV station, they do it. So they are sharing other people's content on their website and these websites are paying for that privilege. So you can do that yourself. You don't have to be a big fancy TV station or a newspaper or some big company with a huge budget. You can do it yourself. You can build a blog and do this yourself and then scale it. So you build, and I'm sure you've seen a lot of these, these websites and pages that, that make you, that you have to go through like a million pages or a slideshow type things where they have like, the top 10 ways to, to make money online and they make you go through this this lengthy slideshow counting them down that's another another example of a viral based site and then you promote that particular post on a lot of different networks or on networks like for example tabula.com outbrain.com content.ad there's a lot of them that that will let you do that some of them are more expensive than others if you're a small potatoes person like i am you probably will not use tabula or outbrain they'll use something like content.ad and what you do is you build a website just a second So if you can teach yourself how to build a website or if you can get someone to do it for you, it's pretty easy. I found, a, a, there's, I found, a, a, I can advise you on different themes to use. There's even a plugin that will help you create those slide share type posts that you see online. When you go to a you know, website, it'll say sponsored content or something else you may be interested in or whatever you can build those very easily with a wordpress driven blog and basically these are content sites i mean they're they're blogs that you're promoting so you're promoting your your blog post on these syndication networks and like i said you're paying per click or paying per impression depending on the network you're using so how do you monetize that once you you have you have all that down. You built your website. You you have content on it. You apply it to different networks, to, to so they can syndicate your content or share your content on other websites such as, you know, your local news station or or wherever. Which you're not going to be able to, to choose which websites they are, that it gets put on. Typically, it's going to be you know it's going to pretty much be random. And you, I mean you can narrow it down by category. It's going to, they're going to choose for you what, what particular website is going to show up on. But, so you have all that down. So how do you monetize that website? So you're having traffic coming to your website that you're paying for, and you have, you know, 100 clicks a day or 500 clicks a day or whatever. How do you monetize that? How do you make money off of that? Well, one way you do it is through Google AdSense, which will have to be approved into their program. And you do with Google AdSense. If you look at any any of the tabula.com sites or if you look on like the, the, the news site that I just talked about, your local news station, a lot of them do this, you'll see Google AdSense on them. So the point is, and it's basically traffic arbitrage and you know in the simplest sense, it's really what it is. You're you're buying clicks. 
from one market and in essence selling them in another market so you're buying the clicks from say for example news10.com that go to your website and you're hoping that they will click on the Google AdSense ads on the, the, the website that you're promoting. So if, say, for example, that you bought a click for $0.10 cents off tabula.com or content.ad, and then they just so happen to click on an ad on your website and you get a couple of dollars for it. So you take a couple of dollars, you subtract the $0.10 cents that, that you spent, and there you have your profit. And the point of that is to scale it. So that's that's that in its simplest form. So I will tell you that Google AdSense does pay very well per click. And that's why it's always appealed to me. That's why that's where that's why I always put a lot of my efforts in, in into that. Things that I don't have to, to deal with customers and, and all of that. It's a lot more straightforward when you're just getting paid for someone to click on your stuff and that's why viral driven sites or content driven sites are very appealing to me because you don't have to deal with customer service you don't have to you don't have to, you don't have to deal with a lot of the other things if you're selling products even digital products you don't have to deal you have you don't have a lot of mental overhead as I like to as I like to say even though you can completely outsource all of that when you're when you're small or when you're you know depending on, on where you are at in your business you might not want to do that so that's what's very appealing to me, but that's in essence what you do. Hold on just a second. But if you want to learn more about how this works, you can. I have some resources, some things, places that I've found that may be of interest to you on the episode page at digitpire.com slash episode 22. If you do not know how to build a WordPress blog, I would highly suggest that you learn how to do it yourself. It's pretty easy. There's a lot of classes that you can take online that will teach you how to do it. And if not, though, you can do it pretty... You can hire someone to do it for you, like on freelancer.com, fiverr.com, to build you a a simple blog that you have to find content for. You have, that's another thing. You have to find content for your blog and a good way to do And you have to constantly be updating it. And a good way to do that is through content aggregators, which I'm going to discuss in just a minute. Okay, so content aggregators. You have a lot of different choices. You can hire people to to write the content for you. You just don't want to use other people's, you don't want to plagiarize, you don't want to use other people's content and slap it on on your page. It's a good way to get a nasty letter from a lawyer and cause you a lot of problems if you do that. So just, And it's not right anyway, so just don't do that. But either you write your own, hire someone or a freelancer to write it for you, or you can use the content ag aggregators like, for example, I want to, to get my computer. Just a second. Like revcontent.com is a good one for to get content. Another, well, actually, hold on a second. What happened to my? Just a second. My computer's wigging out on me. Never once it always said, and I need it the most. There's never a really a good time. Or that up. Is there? Okay. So revcontent.com. Okay, the one that I use primarily is trending at traffic.net. And that way you don't have to worry about licensing or copying other people's work and all of that kind of thing. And so, yeah, that's it in a nutshell. I don't have enough time to go into all the gory details, but you can look for a lot of, a lot of, a lot of the, you, you can find the resources that I mentioned online at digitpartycom slash episode 22. And I do talk about this and a lot of other things on our Facebook page, our Digifier Facebook page. 
which you can find at digitalpire.com slash feed. Make sure you like so you can be notified whenever we post anything new. But I do talk about that a lot there. The, I, I write about it a lot and discuss it a lot. And anything that I find that's intriguing or new or may affect your digital publishing business, I share it there. So yeah, that's a wrap. I'm quickly running out of time. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend, whether you're starting it tomorrow early or on a Saturday. I do appreciate that you spend your time with me. I have so much to share, and I hope that you can learn a thing or two as I have learned things from you, from all of your questions and your feedback that I get. So enjoy the rest of your evening or morning, wherever you may be in the world, and good night, everyone. Bye-bye. You have been listening to the Digifier podcast. You can find all of our podcasts at digifier.com slash podcast or on your favorite podcasting app. We stream live every Thursday at 8 p.m. You can find a schedule of our shows at digifier.com slash schedule. Thank you for listening.